good morning everyone. Had a pretty good night's sleep and uh, drove this morning to the trailhead. And this is a canyon that I visited for the first time last year. And it's a bit of a hike to get into it, but it's a pretty easy hike. It's going through a relatively flat wash. And as I continue in the hike, the canyon walls are gonna close in a little bit. It eventually gets a little bit more narrow. But the skies are blue, the wind is calm. There's uh, definitely some, uh, some warmth in the air where I can tell it's gonna be a warm day. Not a very, very hot day, but a pretty warm day. And this year I'm here about, probably about a, a month or so, a little bit more than a month um, later than last year. And with all the rain, all the vegetation is very lush, <laughs> but there's also these really annoying gnats that like to fly into your eyes and your ears. And so I avoided those last year because it wasn't quite this warm, but we'll see how it goes this year. Hopefully I'll just uh, learn to ignore them. But I got a lot of hiking to do. Looking forward to uh, getting down to the river, setting up camp, and uh, seeing what sort of opportunities await me this year in this beautiful canyon. Well, the canyon walls are starting to close in a little bit, and I would have a very difficult time guessing how tall these are, uh, several hundred feet at least. And along their base are these piles of boulders and since it's a little bit later than my usual trip, uh, the plants are a little bit different. There's a lot more uh, wildflowers and stuff in bloom. And so the air is just very, very, it just smells so nice. And since there's been some evidence of uh, water going through the washes here, uh, there are some areas that have some very nice mud cracks. So that'll certainly be something to keep an eye on. But it's usually the first couple days or so of a trip where I'm trying to find a sense of rhythm that it can be a bit more difficult. So I always have a bit of anxiety. But taking time to uh, just take long deep breaths and just to smell that desert air to be more observant of everything around me really helps with that. Because at a certain point, I'll fall into a rhythm. I'll find subjects and have all kinds of plans and backup plans in terms of things to photograph, depending on the conditions. But when I'm just getting here, it's just, uh, it can be a little bit daunting at times. But one thing that's very nice is I have this entire canyon all to myself not a single vehicle at the trailhead other than my own and uh, so I should be able to get the prime campsite the one I had last year. I'm gonna keep hiking here I'm about halfway through my seven mile hike and uh, look forward to getting camp set up and see if I can find some interesting subjects to work with today. The conditions are so incredibly beautiful. This doesn't even look real.
So that was two seconds of uh, 45. Um, when I was walking through here, there was this interesting boulder up top that looks like this dude that's smiling with a flat top. And I was going to take a picture of it just for fun, but when I opened my camera app, it pointed right down at the ground at these two rocks with some interesting cracked mud and have a cool flow to it. And it's kind of funny that that's how I found the scene, but it's in a soft reflected light right now. I put a warming filter on there and I'm just going to expose one sheet of film. Um, so this is a sheet of Provia and uh, I have seven more sheets for this backpacking trip, but kind of funny that it was a smiling dude in a flap top, flap top, could be a flap top, smiling dude in a flat top that led to finding a rock on the ground. So not bad to expose a single sheet of film before even setting up camp. So that was 2.5 seconds of 45. And there's a very interesting uh, bit of dried mud here with some curls down the middle, uh, some interesting lines in the foreground, some embedded rocks, and then some smaller curls in the background. So I set up a horizontal composition um, with the central band a little bit higher in the composition. And uh, yeah. We'll see, but that's two scenes photographed so far, uh, even before getting to camp. Though I'm pretty close right now. There's a few very small high clouds. Well, not high clouds. I mean, all clouds are high, I guess, but there's a few small clouds up in the sky. And uh, it's the sort that, I don't know. We'll see if they build in a bit more throughout the day, which they likely will, but they seem like the type that would go away as you get closer to sunset, which is what I'm hoping for. Because I do have a evening photo in mind, but it feels pretty good to expose a second sheet of film, but now I should probably go over and uh, get camp set up. I'm getting pretty close to where I'm going to set up camp. And a little further back in the canyon, I noticed that there was this large dead cottonwood tree that used to lay across the wash. Remember last year, it was always a decision of whether I should go underneath it or kind of go around it. And uh, that tree was uh, gone this year because of flash floods. And uh, here it is right here, hung up on this rock. Now, 
I was getting a little concerned as I was heading further and further down the canyon because there is a scene I want to photograph. It's going to be a evening light sort of uh, scene. And it's an area with these two large boulders and this cottonwood tree off in the background. And so I started working my way further and further down the canyon. And as I was not seeing this tree, I was growing concerned that that tree was going to be suspended between those boulders. Now the good news is that it isn't. But check this out. So here's a tree here. The boulders are right down there. So it came within maybe about 100 feet of the scene that I really want to photograph. And uh, if this was lodged between the boulders over there, it, it just wouldn't have been a photo anymore. So thankfully, this boulder right here caught this ginormous tree. And as a result, I will potentially have an evening subject. But I'm just gonna go around the bend there, get camp set up, get some lunch, and then uh, relax a little bit. Well, it's a little after 3.30, and after getting camp set up, I went for a bit of a wander along the river. And I knew right away that uh, I'm not gonna be able to cross the river this year. Um, on the other side of the river, there's another canyon that I wanted to visit last year and wanted to visit this year as well, but um, yeah, the river is just too high. Um, whenever the water is looking really murky, uh, you know right away that it's it's no good, um, and you see it's flowing pretty fast and it's also pretty deep. So, but that's just fine. Um, unlike past years where I actually had to cross the river twice to get to where I was camping, uh, this year river crossings are completely optional. Uh, but around I don't know, maybe 11, 12 o'clock or so, uh, some small clouds appeared, and. It seems like around two o'clock is when the wind is at its strongest and things fade off. So right now the wind is you know, still about the same, but the cloud formation seems to be going down a little bit. Um, the area where I was walking by earlier where there was that massive cottonwood log that was really close to being in the middle of the photo I want to take, uh, that's gonna be an evening photo. And in a perfect world, I would have uh, blue skies and no wind, uh, but a little bit of clouds isn't going to make it too big of a deal. And there's usually always a pause in the wind. So uh, my goal will be to head over there and get the camera set up, and uh, hopefully, hopefully expose some film on that. Uh, I brought eight sheets of film with me, and I've exposed two sheets so far, so I have six remaining. Absolutely beautiful down here. Um, one slight 
curiosity is that sometimes when the wind shifts, um, it smells a little bit like death. Uh, so might be a carcass around here somewhere. So I'll probably have to investigate that. Um, there are uh, cattle in this canyon, so you never know. But other than the hint of death, uh, it is quite delightful here, and I look forward to relaxing a little bit and then seeing what happens this evening. Well, I got my camera set up and the conditions are very similar to last year when I tried to photograph this scene. So I've got my camera there and then the scene I'm photographing, you got a boulder there, a boulder there, and then there's a really cool cottonwood tree with three trunks right in the middle. And the sky overhead, there's some blue sky out to the east but to the west where it's a bit more important, there's a lot of clouds building in. And this is very similar to what happened last year when I came here. And uh, the clouds really snuff out the light. Um, though I did check the weather forecast because I can get that via my satellite messenger. And it showed that it's gonna be clear tonight. So these clouds are going to dissipate as we get closer to sunset. And the main thing will be if that happens in time for the sun, which I'll spin you around here, is currently hitting all these, this, I mean, this huge wall back here. I want the sun to bounce off that and then into the scene back behind me here when this falls in the shadow. And I just need to have it where there's still some, a good amount of sun hitting those cliffs there and the clouds to the west dissipate, honestly. I don't think it's going to happen, but that's fine because I was able to expose, um, you know, two sheets of film on two different subjects on the way in. And then as I've been wandering around, I found uh, two other subjects that'll be pretty good. Uh, maybe on this trip, maybe on another trip, but I'm going to stay on the scene. I'm going to have my camera set up and I'm going to hope that these clouds dissipate, but either way, I will have a delicious dinner waiting for me back at camp and a very restful night's sleep down by the river so yeah we shall see Well, it's uh, about 6.30 now, and the clouds to the west are starting to dissipate a bit. And there's definitely some moments of calm, like right now. And I'm still not yet in my window of light for potentially taking this photo. Uh, there's still some direct sunlight hitting the tree and some direct sunlight hitting the foreground. And so by the time the sun moves and this behind me is still potentially in sunlight, um, foreground and shade. This could happen. Um, it's definitely a good trend. Um, I'm not keeping my hopes up incredibly high, but um, things are progressing, which is nice. And patience is certainly key, I think, with this kind of thing. Um, especially since this is the second time I've tried to photograph this scene. But we shall see what happens.
Well, after a very long afternoon of waiting, the clouds are gone and the wind was really calm. And I went ahead and exposed a sheet of Provia 100. And I used a warming filter for it because even though it is fairly warm light, uh, there's a lot of blue light from the sky getting in there as well. And so hopefully that will warm things up a little bit so that the photo looks pretty true to life. That's what you see there. And then after exposing that sheet of film, I exposed another one as well. And I'm trying to avoid shooting doubles on this trip, but this is the subject that I came back here to photograph since I wasn't able to uh, get the sort of photo I was after last year. And so I figure why not splurge and do two sheets of film. But it is a wonderful evening, blue skies, calm wind, and uh, really looking forward to getting some dinner back at camp. Now there's a couple other subjects around the corner that I hope to photograph in the coming days with my four remaining sheets of film. Um, and so I'm gonna see how the light is on those and see if I can find some compositions. Um, I mean, worst case scenario, I could always hike back to my truck and grab some more film holders and come back. But that being said, I think by the time I'm done with the film that I have, I think I'll have enough of a sense of accomplishment to want to move on to uh, some other subjects, some other subjects in some other areas. So, time to get things packed up and uh, head on back to camp. The conditions that evening were excellent a significant departure from the thunderstorm that rolled through the night before. After hiking so many miles and exposing four sheets of film on three different subjects, I look forward to a warm dinner and a restful night's sleep back at camp. Of the three subjects I photographed that day, I'm satisfied with all of them. My first photo of the two rocks feels quite poetic, with one rock being reclaimed by the earth, while the other looks on helplessly. That's the power of photography, the ability to evoke emotion from ordinary subjects. And if not for a smiling dude with a flat top looking down from above, I would have walked right past this wonderful subject, hidden in plain sight. Provia handled both the color and the contrast beautifully, and the warming filter helped avoid a cyan color cast. My photo of the cracked and curled mud is an interesting study of texture and form. I like how each layer is different, from the embedded rocks toward the bottom, to the large curls in the middle, and the sea of cracked mud in the background, all of which are illuminated by warm, soft, low-angle reflected light. One of the many reasons I love taking photos in the canyons of southern Utah. It was the final scene I anticipated most. Last year's attempt was spoiled by clouds and flat light. And although a similar pattern emerged that afternoon, I remained patient and sure enough the clouds dissipated and the wind settled, allowing me to expose two sheets of Provia with a warming filter. There's a small amount of wind movement in the leaves, but I don't mind. Those are the sort of imperfections that makes our work real. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you around next time. You may have noticed this video has no ads and no sponsors, and I think it's nicer that way. If you enjoy this ad-free and clickbait-free content and want to help me live my dream, a voluntary contribution through PayPal or by joining my Patreon helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. You can find more information by visiting my website at benhorn.com donate. I also have prints, eBooks, and my annual portfolio is available on my website. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you around next time.